Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this one, we want to explore the concept of CMake presets and see how they help you and more importantly, how you take advantage of them inside of Visual Studio Code. Let's open the project we did in the last video. I think I still have it opened here. No, this is one. This one is using CMake presets, but we can open the previous one. So CMake with cats. I think this was the project. This is what we did in the last video, and we used a bunch of cats. But one of the main reasons I prefer to use CMake is that it is really everywhere in C++, and it is supported by a lot of IDEs. The way we have this project set up, it is going to be understood by some IDEs. But there is still a chance that some IDE is going to pick a wrong compiler that you don't support in your C++ project. And there really needs a way to tell IDEs the configurations that they can use to build your project. To really show this idea, I am going to try and open this project inside of Visual Studio. And we're going to see what happens. I am going to open Microsoft Visual Studio on my system here. And I am going to try and open this project. So open a project or a solution. I am going to click on that. And I am going to go to the location where I have my projects here. So we can go to... Uh, let's go open the previous project that we did. CMake with kits. And we are going to open this. And, and, and if we hit open, we see that it's not even opening this. It wants us to open the build folder, which is not going to contain anything that we want. So what do we do? Let's try to open a local folder and again, go to that location and choose the project and try to open it. It is going to open the folder. It is going to bring those files in. It is going to open the project and uh, we can build it. If we hit build and say build all, you see that the project is going to be built and we can run it. So if we select the rooster.exe as a startup item, it is going to run and you see that it is doing whatever we want the application to do. This is one of the powers of CMake. You can use it across many IDEs. Now, this is working because Microsoft Visual Studio has good support for CMake, but not all IDEs are going to easily understand what is happening here. And another thing is that you can see that it is just automatically using Microsoft Visual Studio, but it is going to take out the option to, for example, build with GCC on Windows if we happen to need this option here. So that's one of the motivations of using CMake presets. It's a way that CMake provides to tell projects or IDEs the configurations that you want your project to use. Okay, let's go back to the project inside of Visual Studio Code. What we can do now is to add a CMake preset file. And that file is going to be containing options we want to use in this project and configurations that are going to be easily picked up by IDEs and everything is going to be much better. Let's go to the documentation and say CMake presets. And you can click on this and really read all you want about this. They say that one problem that CMake users often face is sharing settings with other people for common ways to configure a project. This may be done to support CI builds and all kinds of crazy things. But they say that they provide CMake presets as a solution. And to use CMake presets, you can set up a CMake presets.json file or a CMake user presets.json file. And these files are going to be merged together to put together a configuration that you use. There are a few kinds of presets you can use in CMake. There are configure presets, there are build presets, there are test presets and other presets as you see in the documentation here. But in this video, we will be focusing on configure presets and build presets. If you want to learn about test presets and how you use them, I have them covered in my CMake series. So make sure to check that out in the description below if you are interested. But for now, I am going to open a project that is using CMake presets. So let's file open folder and open project four. 
with CMake presets. I am not going to start this from scratch because you already know a bit about CMake. We covered the CMake list that txt file in the last video. So all this project is doing really is adding this CMake presets that JSON file, and you can get this file from the Git repository of this project. Now, you may think that this preset is a bit complex or convoluted, and you are right. I myself can't write these files properly. I have to get help from many places. I think I got this file from a project that I follow on GitHub. I think it is called Endless Sky. You can check it out on GitHub. What I did is I took the preset file in that project and used it as a starting point to do my preset here. My configure presets are going to be setting up a few compilers that my project supports here. And in CMake presets, you can have presets inherit from other presets. In this case, we have the base preset, which is hidden. Okay, you see that the hidden property is set to true. It is going to set up the generator that we want to use. Again, if you want to learn about generators, I would recommend you check out my CMake series. We're going to go into the details, but this doesn't matter. It is just a thing that is used by CMake to set up your project. And you have to make sure you have it installed if you want to use it. You can search in Google how to install Ninja on Windows. So install Ninja on Windows and you will see ways to install it. I think what we are using on my Windows machine is installed as part of the WinLibs libraries that we installed. Let's go to C and uh, look at MinGW to confirm. If we go to bin and go to a section with N, we should find Ninja. I think it is installed in this location, but I am not sure. So, so let's make sure. Uh, where is N? Yes, we have Ninja here, and it is what we are using. This is really cool. We can call it from the terminal if we want. So let's do terminal and call Ninja. Ninja version. And we are going to report the Ninja version that we are using here. So this is a build system that CMake is going to call to build your project. And my base configuration here is using that build system. You see that we can specify the location where the build files are going to go. In this case, we want to go in the source directory, go in the build folder, and then set up another folder with the preset name. And the preset name is just going to be this value that you specify here. We also have a Windows preset, which is going to be inheriting from the base preset. And because we are inheriting, we will be getting all these properties here. For example, we will be inheriting the generator. We will be inheriting this binary dir. We will be inheriting a lot of stuff from this base configuration preset here, if I may say it like that. We specify the architecture that our application is going to be built for. We specify a few cache variables. You can specify cache variables in a C make preset file. We just want to build our application in debug mode. And we specify that we want to be using the compiler from Microsoft. Again, if you want to learn about these things in detail, I have a few videos in my CMake series. You may check them out, but I also strongly suggest you read the documentation because they say more than I can say in a video like this. So we have a configuration which is going to be building using the compiler from Microsoft. I also have a configuration that is going to be targeting the Mac OS, and it is going to be using the Clang compiler on a Mac. So if you try to build this project on a Mac and select to use this preset, the IDE you are using is going to know that it is going to be using these configurations here. It is going to build in debug mode. It is going to use the Clang compiler and everything is going to fall in place. On Linux, we will be using the G++ compiler to build this project. And this is how you set up the settings that your project is going to be built with. And the good thing about CMake presets is that IDEs know to hunt for this file in your project and use the settings in here to build your project and everything is going to be really in place. For example, if your project doesn't support Clang, you may take it out. You may just set up presets for the compilers that you support. And this is really, really cool. I have to say that you don't have to use presets. They are just an addition that help your project play well with IDEs. 
but I find myself using them a lot because they make my life easier. If I take my project, for example, from Visual Studio Code to work on it inside Microsoft Visual Studio or C Lion or any other IDE that supports CMake and C++. We have a few configuration presets, configure presets, that's what they are called in CMake. But if you go down, you see that we also have world presets and these are going to be used in the build stage of your project. You can just use these I have here and then change your project later on if you happen to need more. But I tried to really give you the basics one you need on each operating system. So on Windows, we will be using the compiler from Microsoft. On Linux, we will be using G++. And on Mac, we will be using the Clang compiler, which is embedded in your Clang toolset for C++. Once we have this set up, how do we build the project using presets? Well, you go through the command palette. So let's do view command palette. We can say CMake, select configure preset. Okay, so this is what you will select here. If you click, it is going to read the configurations that you have in your CMake presets. And you see that it has detected that we are on Windows and it is just going to give me the Windows base preset. If I select it, notice things that are going to happen in my status bar here. The configure preset is going to be set to Windows base and it is going to be picking up bold presets. It is going to pick up the clean bold preset by default, but I can change it. So to select a bold preset, you can also do view command palette and say select bold preset. So you can, you can say select bold preset. I am going to select this here. And it is going to give me a few options. There is a clean build which is going to clean and remove artifacts before you build your project. But I am going to just select the verbose build because I can do that. Notice that the verbose build is going to be using Ninja behind the scenes. So make sure you have that. And once you have selected a configure preset and the build preset, as you can see in the status bar here, you can just hit the build button. So let's hit that. This is going to kick off the build. You see that the build finished with exit code zero, which is a good sign that our build was successful. And we can hit the run button to start running the application. You see that it is going to run and do whatever we want to do. We can even debug the application. The usual thing really, let's set up a breakpoint on line 23 and hit the debug button below here. And if we do that, we see that we have hit our breakpoint. We can see the local variables. We can hover over values to see things inside. We can really do all kinds of crazy things. We can even step through things. And this is going to work really fine. CMake presets are going to make your life easy as a CMake C++ developer. Let's close our debugging session and open this project from Microsoft Visual Studio and show you that we can really do the same things here and have a nice experience with our project, which is based on CMake using presets. So what I can do, I can close off Visual Studio Code here and open Microsoft Visual Studio. And I am going to open a local folder again. Now I am going to go into Sandbox and go to the location where I have the project that uses presets. I am going to select the folder now you see that it can show me my build presets. I can do a clean build. I can do a verbose build. Okay, so I can use these things here. And these are coming from my CMake preset file. And this is really cool. Let's try to build the project. We can do build and build all. It is going to say that the build succeeded. I can select the started item, which is going to be the rooster executable. I can run it. It is going to do whatever we want to do in there. And let's bring back our IDE, go in the main CPP file, maybe set up a breakpoint inside of Visual Studio. This is how you set up a breakpoint. And you can start debugging. So debug, start debugging. And we are going to hit the breakpoint and we can see the same information here. I really want you to see the power of using CMake. It is easy to take your project from Visual Studio Code and build it in another IDE that supports CMake. This is really priceless. As a C++ developer, you don't want to be locked into any editor or IDE. 
At this time, a Visual Studio code happens to be good, but nothing says that it is going to be still good or your best choice in two years ahead. If a Visual Studio code goes away, you can just use another IDE, or you can even build your projects on the command line using CMake, but I don't want to go there because this is going to scare off a lot of people, and I want you to really have a good experience with CMake. If you want to see that, make sure to check out my CMake series, and again, I am going to link to that in the description below. This is really all I had to share in this video, showing you how CMake presets are an option. You can take the project I have on GitHub and use it as a starting point and modify it. For example, you can add your own classes. You can do all kinds of crazy things. In the last video, I showed you that you can add new files to the project using CMake. You just have to put in a few header files and then in the cmakelist.txt file, modify your add executable command to add those other files here. For example, if you have a person.cpp file added, you can add it like this and it is going to be picked up by CMake and used. And this is really cool. If you got any value out of this video, please make sure to like, share and subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I am going to stop here guys and I will see you next time.